Sophia, I've been reading, researching, trying to understand what's happening with Ava. I found some, troubling things. What do you mean, troubling things? Studies, articles, they talk about children, especially girls, who grow up without their fathers. They say these girls often struggle with a sense of abandonment, a void they try to fill with all the wrong things. What things, Mom Ines? What are you saying? Promiscuity, Sophia, the statistics show a higher rate of promiscuity among girls who weren't raised by their fathers. They often seek validation, affection, love in all the wrong places, trying to fill the emptiness left by their father's absence. What? We should use this information, which indicates that girls raised without their fathers tend to be highly promiscuous, to our advantage by ensuring that Ava doesn't end up reinforcing these negative statistics. No, no, mom, please, I can't bear to hear this. Not about my Ava. I'm sorry, Sophia, but you need to hear this. They also mention how these girls may feel they're not good enough, that they have to prove their worth to get love, to feel wanted. They say environmental factors like unstable relationships at home, seeing their mother struggle or be mistreated, can make them more vulnerable. Sophia looks down, a tear sliding down her cheek. She knows the truth in Ines' words. The scandal, her broken relationships, the choices she's made, all flash through her mind. I've failed her, haven't I, Mom? I've made everything worse. No, Sophia, it's not just about blame. It's about understanding. Ava is looking for something, something she feels she's missing. She's seen too much. She's confused, hurt, and she's acting out. But I tried. I tried to give her everything. Expensive private schools, a stable home environment, a loving family, and I sacrificed so much for my children. I worked so hard to be both mother and father to her. I know, my child, but you can't be both. No one can, and the choices we make, they ripple through our children's lives. Ava feels abandoned by her father, but she's also seen you in pain, in conflict. She's confused, torn between your love and the chaos around her. So what do we do, Mom Ines? How do we help her? I can't lose her, I can't bear the thought of her going down that path. We have to be honest with her. She needs to know why you made the choices you did, why things turned out this way. She needs to see that we're here, that we love her no matter what. But we also need to set boundaries, show her there are consequences, that she doesn't need to repeat the cycle. But what if it's too late, Mom? What if she's already chosen? Sophia wipes her tears, trying to steady herself, but her hands are shaking. Her voice is barely above a whisper. I just want her to be happy, to feel loved, whole. I don't want her to live with the same regrets I have. Then show her that, Sophia. Be vulnerable, be honest, let her see your pain, your mistakes, but also your hope, your faith. She needs to know that despite everything, God's love is bigger than all our failures. Sophia nods, wiping her face. She looks at the closed door of Ava's bedroom, her expression filled with both dread and determination. Okay, I'll talk to her. I'll try to reach her, before it's too late. Let's hope she is willing to embrace the right path and distance herself from negative influences. Belinda visits Soldat and Santino's estate. Good morning, Miss Belinda. Please come in. The madam is expecting you. Yes, thank you. Here goes nothing. Good morning. I am Ms. Belinda. Mrs. Rivera is expecting me. May I come in, please? Of course, Miss Belinda. My name is Beverly, and I've been assigned to attend to all your needs during your stay at the estate. I must mention that some of our staff members are in training, so certain conversations may be recorded for quality assurance purposes. Additionally, please be aware that the estate is equipped with state-of-the-art security systems. Understood. Thank you for the information, Beverly. It's a pleasure to meet you. Please follow me. Good morning, Aunt Belinda. Mom will be down in a few minutes. Good morning, Angela. I, I'm so, 
So, I need to go now. Please have a seat. A few minutes later. Soledad, thank you for seeing me. I know I've already apologized, but I need to be honest with you about something else. After I kicked Angela out of the house, I couldn't let go of my doubts. I followed her around, checking to make sure she wasn't seeing my ex-husband. I even gossiped with my sisters, Sophia and Adriana, saying it was good I put Angela in her place. The truth is, it wasn't Angela who was a threat. It was my own sisters. They were the ones who were actually involved with my husband. They misled me, took advantage of my fears, and used my gullibility against me. Are you telling me that you not only wronged Angela but also allowed yourself to be manipulated by your own sisters despite my warnings? You brought all this chaos into my life, and for what? I know, Soledad, I see now how wrong I was. I'm so sorry for everything. I've caused so much pain, and I can't take it back. I've come here to beg for your forgiveness. Forgiveness? Is it something that can truly be given in the face of such betrayal? Can trust be rebuilt when it's been shattered? Please, Soledad, I know I don't deserve it, but I need to make things right. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to fix this. Belinda, you've caused a lot of harm, and it won't be easy to mend the broken trust. But as a Christian, I am called to forgive. Forgiveness doesn't erase the consequences of your actions, but it's a beginning. You need to face those consequences and seek genuine change. Thank you, Soledad. I can't tell you how much this means to me. I promise you, I'll do everything I can to make amends. Belinda, you've done a lot of harm, not just to Angela but to yourself. It's easy to blame others, but true healing comes from within. You must face the truth of your own actions and the consequences they bring. I understand. I'm ready to face whatever comes next. I've been blind, and now I see the truth. I need to repair not just my relationships, but my own self. Good. But remember, forgiveness is not the end of the journey. It's only the beginning. You have a lot of work ahead of you to rebuild trust, especially with Angela. I'll make it right. Thank you for giving me this chance. I hope you mean what you say, Belinda. For your sake and for Angela's, I'll keep my promise, Soledad. I better leave now. I need to pack my bags. The boys and I are leaving the country for good. Go well. Thank you, Soledad. Stay blessed. Soledad watches Belinda leave, her gaze reflecting a mix of hope and apprehension. The door closes behind Belinda with a soft click, leaving Soledad alone in the quiet room. You know, Mom Ines, I think, I think Ava will be fine. She has my genes, and Miguel's. I mean, with a pharmacist for a mother and a geophysicist for a father, she's bound for greatness, right? She's destined to succeed, no matter what, Sophia. That's not how it works. Genes can play a part, yes, but it takes so much more than that for someone to succeed. But she's smart, just like Miguel was. And she's got my determination. It's in her blood. She just needs time. She'll figure it out. Time isn't enough, Sophia. It's not just about what's in her blood. It's about what's in her heart, her mind, and her spirit. Without the right environment, hard work, strong principles, and discipline, those gifts can go to waste. She'll learn. She's young. She'll outgrow this phase. Sophia, she won't just outgrow this. Ava needs guidance, structure. She needs to see that success doesn't just come from being smart or having the right parents. It comes from God's favor, from building good habits, making the right choices, staying disciplined, things Ava is struggling with right now. And what do you want me to do, Ines? Just sit here and judge her. Tell her she's going down the wrong path every single day. I'm her mother, not her warden. No, Sophia, 
but she needs to see you living those values, not just preaching them. You keep telling her about what she should do, but are you showing her? So now you're blaming me. You think I'm the reason she's acting out. I'm saying that Ava is watching you, Sophia. Every choice you make, every decision you take, she's learning from you. She sees you putting your hope in things like genes and destiny, instead of in God and the values he gives us. So I'm a failure, is that it? I failed as a wife, and now I'm failing as a mother. What do you want from me, mom? I want you to see the bigger picture. To stop making excuses for Ava, or for yourself. You need to help her find her way back to God, to what is right, instead of relying on what you think is, destined. I just, I just want her to have a better life than I did. To have everything I couldn't give her. Then start by giving her what she truly needs, Sophia, a solid foundation, a clear path, and an example worth following. Trust in God's plan, not in fate or genes. I hope you're right, Ines, I really do. If Ava messes up in life due to her bad choices and father's genes, I am thankful that I have another daughter. What? Ah. Nothing mom, Adriana's teenage daughter, Isabel, is also my daughter, right? Yes, Sophia, is there something you're not telling me? I had a premature baby girl, Zemena, just before Alejandro was born. The father took Zemena, and I couldn't disclose the pregnancy for fear of judgment due to having three children with different men out of wedlock. At the time, I was married, but my husband was away, and I became involved with another man. I'm relieved that Zemena is being cared for by her father. However, family dynamics might shift when his current wife has their first child, especially if it's a boy. It's nothing, Mom. A few weeks later. The conference hall is bustling with professionals and academics, all gathered for a major seminar on geophysics. The room is filled with anticipation as attendees settle into their seats. A large screen at the front of the room displays the title of the presentation, Advancements and Future Directions in Geophysics. Miguel steps up to the podium, his presence commanding attention. He begins his presentation with a confident and engaging tone. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here today to discuss the latest advancements in geophysics and their potential impacts on our understanding of the Earth. As we explore the depths of our planet, we're not just uncovering physical data but also gaining insights that can profoundly influence how we live and interact with our environment. He gestures toward a series of dynamic slides showcasing cutting-edge research and technological innovations in geophysics. The audience is visibly engaged, taking notes and listening intently. One of the most exciting developments in our field is the use of advanced seismic imaging techniques. These techniques allow us to visualize subsurface structures with unprecedented clarity, providing valuable data for everything from natural resource exploration to earthquake preparedness. Miguel continues to delve into complex topics, explaining intricate concepts with clarity and enthusiasm. The room is filled with a sense of intellectual excitement as he shares his expertise. But beyond the technical aspects, what truly drives me is the broader impact of our work. Geophysics not only enhances our understanding of the planet but also helps us address critical issues such as climate change and environmental sustainability. Our research has the power to influence policies, protect communities, and create a better future for generations to come. As Miguel concludes his presentation, he takes a moment to shift the focus to a more personal and profound message. I'd like to share something with you all that's deeply important to me. Through my journey in geophysics and the challenges I've faced, I've come to realize that our work and our lives are intertwined with a greater purpose. For me, that purpose is rooted in my faith in Christ. I've seen firsthand how faith can transform lives, providing hope and direction even in the darkest times. As we seek to advance our knowledge and make a difference in the world, I believe it's essential to also consider the spiritual dimension of our lives. True fulfillment comes from aligning our work with a higher purpose and from experiencing the love and grace of God. If anyone here feels a sense of longing or curiosity about faith, I invite you to explore it further. My personal journey has led me to a place of peace and purpose that I would not have found without Christ. 
If you're interested in learning more about how faith can play a role in your life and work, I'd be happy to talk and pray with you. The room is quiet, with many attendees reflecting on Miguel's words. A few approach him after the presentation, eager to engage in deeper conversation. Miguel speaks with them warmly, sharing his experiences and offering support. Miguel, your presentation was amazing, and your message about faith really touched me. I'd like to learn more about how you found your faith. I'd be glad to share more with you. Faith has been a cornerstone in my life, guiding me through both triumphs and trials. Let's talk more about it and how it can offer you the same strength and direction. Miguel surrounded by engaged attendees, reflecting a sense of fulfillment and purpose that transcends his professional achievements. His integration of faith and work illustrates a harmonious balance that resonates deeply with those around him. Bilsenia's living room, the room is dimly lit, filled with tension. Bilsenia paces back and forth, wringing her hands nervously. Her husband, Hector, sits on the sofa, looking concerned. Bilsenia's face is etched with worry. Hector, I can't stop thinking about what happened to Belinda and Soledad. If they could do that to their own family, what's to stop them from coming after you? Dulcinea, we need to stay calm. We don't know their intentions. Worrying like this won't help. You don't understand. My cousins, Sophia and Adriana, are ruthless. I've seen how they operate. If they want something, they'll do whatever it takes to get it. And right now, I'm afraid they might come after you. I am committed to you, babe. I am not Lewis. We've got to face this together. Let's think rationally and not jump to conclusions. Rationally? How can I be rational when every time I turn around, I hear about them causing more chaos? I don't even own a home like Soledad or Belinda. If they try to target me, I don't know what I'd do. We'll figure it out. If we're vigilant and support each other, we can handle whatever comes our way. Who could that be at this hour? I'll check it. Hector opens the door to reveal Sophia and Adriana, both with charming but insincere smiles. Dulcinea's eyes widen with fear and suspicion. Dulcinea, Hector. Hector, the only chartered accountant in the family. Thank you for watching this episode of The Price of Pride. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated with our latest content. We'd also appreciate it if you could like and share our videos. We value your support. In the tapestry of our Christian journey, each thread of our lives is woven with purpose, challenge, and divine opportunity. As we reflect on the scenes we've witnessed, let us draw lessons that illuminate our path and empower our spiritual walk. Ennis's concerns about the impact of absent father figures on children raise important questions about our role in nurturing a positive environment. While studies may present statistics and trends, it is vital to remember that our faith teaches us that every child is a unique creation with potential beyond circumstances. Sophia's reliance on genetic traits rather than spiritual guidance reminds us that true greatness is not inherited but cultivated through dedication, prayer, and God's grace. We must seek to build strong, principled lives, guiding our children with love and wisdom, grounded in faith rather than fear. Berlinta's encounter with Soledad underscores the power of truth and reconciliation. Even amidst betrayal and deceit, forgiveness and honesty pave the way for healing and unity. As Christians, we are called to seek forgiveness and extend grace, even when the truth is painful. Soledad's response serves as a testament to the strength of Christian forgiveness, reminding us that healing comes from embracing truth and offering grace, no matter the hurt we endure. Miguel's presentation on geophysics, culminating in the sharing of the gospel, highlights the integration of our professional and spiritual lives. His example teaches us that every opportunity, be it in science, business, or any field, is a chance to reflect God's glory and lead others to Christ. 
Let us view our careers and talents not as separate from our faith, but as avenues to serve and witness to the transformative power of Jesus. Dulcinea's fears concerning her husband Hector reflect a common struggle, the temptation to let anxiety overshadow our trust in God. Instead of succumbing to worry, we are reminded to surrender our fears to Jesus, trusting Him to guard our relationships in our hearts. Prayer and faith are our strongest defenses against the trials and uncertainties of life. As we conclude this episode, let us remember that empowerment in our Christian walk comes from trusting God with all aspects of our lives, seeking His guidance, and embodying His principles in our actions. Let us be inspired to grow in faith, extend grace, and live with the assurance that God's wisdom and love guide us through every challenge. Before we conclude this episode, we would like to share the following verses for you to reflect upon. Please note that they are taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Trust in God and His guidance. Proverbs 3, 5-6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Psalm 37, 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. The power of forgiveness and reconciliation. If a science 432 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Matthew 6 14-15 says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you, but if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Colossians 3 13 says, Forbearing one another, and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Raising children in faith and righteousness. Proverbs 22 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Deuteronomy 6, 6-7 says, And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Ephesians 6, 4 says, And, ye fathers, Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Witnessing and sharing the gospel, Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meanness and fear. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom, grace, and guidance in our lives. We thank you for the lessons you have taught us today, reminding us to trust you in all circumstances, to forgive as we have been forgiven, and to live in a way that reflects your loving truth. Lord, we ask for your strength to overcome fear and anxiety, for we know that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, 7 Help us to cast all our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us deeply. 1 Peter 5, 7 May we be steadfast in prayer trusting that you hear and answer according to your perfect will. Father, teach us to forgive others as you have forgiven us. May our hearts be tender and open, ready to offer grace even when it is difficult. Help us to remember that forgiveness brings healing and freedom, and that through it, we reflect your nature to the world around us. Lord, we pray for wisdom and discernment in raising our children and influencing those around us. May we guide them in the way of righteousness, teaching them to love you with all their hearts, minds, and strength. Deuteronomy 6, 
5 to 7. Help us to be examples of integrity, faith, and perseverance, that they may see in us the light of Christ. We also ask for boldness to share your gospel with others, unashamed and unafraid, knowing that it is the power of God into salvation. Romans 1 16. Use our gifts, our words, and our lives to draw others to your loving truth. May we always be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. 1 Peter 3 15, doing so with gentleness and respect. Finally, we pray for our Christian community, that we may be united in love, strengthened in faith, and empowered to grow in our spiritual walk. Help us to encourage one another, to bear one another's burdens, and to spur each other on toward love and good deeds. Hebrews 10 24 to 25. In all things, May your name be glorified. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.